Greetings. My name is Lisa Jackson. I'm the Education Coordinator here at the Savannah African Art Museum. Uh, welcome to our December workshop. Now, we wear our masks and comply, but because we have safe distancing here, I can actually remove my mask. There are various harvest celebrations around the world, and we've been celebrating them for our past few workshops from September, October, and November. Why? Because it's a celebration of the harvest. In Africa, they are filled with music and dancing, mask wearing, costumes, uh, reverence to the creator, and reverence to the ancestors. Uh, in Nigeria, it's the Yam Festival. Yes, they celebrate the yam. I love yams. Okay, and in Ghana, then they have the Hamoo uh, celebration. So there are several of them, and one common one is First Fruits. And First Fruits is celebrated in various ways, and actually First Fruits is the basis of Kwanzaa. Dr. Mayalana Karanga created Kwanzaa back in 1962 as an African-American celebration based on the African traditional harvest celebration, First Fruits. And so from that, he created this celebration, which is a celebration of family, community, and culture in the African American community. And so with that, there are various principles that come with that, because uh, the celebration actually is from December 26th through January 1st. And each day, there's a specific day that is celebrated and focused on. And these are principles, seven, there are seven principles, and they're based on the Nguzu Saba, and that's Swahili. The names of the seven principles are also in Swahili, but I will be sharing with you its English translation. Um, so the Nguzu Saba, the first day, December 26th, it's Umoja which is unity. On the second day, it's Kuji Shakalia, and that's self-determination. Ujima is collective and responsibility. And then the next day was Ujama, cooperative economics. And then the next day is Nia, purpose. The next day, Kumba, creativity. Imani, faith. So these are principles that are practiced Throughout the year, it's a way of life, as Dr. Milana, Mayalana Karenga says. It's a way of life, but this is when we focus upon it. And each day, a candle is lit. And a greeting during this week to someone would be, be Habaragani. And you would reply whatever that day's principle is. Like if I said Habaragani to you, it means what's news. Then you would say on December 26th, Umoja, which is unity. And that's just so you're reinforcing what the principle is for that day. So that is a little information on Kwanzaa. There's so much more information that you'll find on our website. And, and you will also see um, a little bit more information from Dr. Mayalana Karanga's book on Kwanzaa. There are many different websites and information about Kwanzaa. I suggest that you, you visit those, but go to the source, Dr. Mylana Karanga's book, which is called Kwanzaa, A Celebration of Family, Community, and Culture. And so why are we talking about it today? Because we are making a Kwanzaa assemblage. Yes, we've been leading up to today. It's a culmination of our workshops from September through November, celebrating the harvest. We made masks, not masks like these, but decorative masks, uh, very colorful def decorative masks made of plant fibers, made of fabrics. Uh, we've also made, um, we've made dolls made of corn husk, which is a part of the harvest. Uh, we've also worked with different fibers and materials. We learned about the flower roselle, which is a beautiful flower, which you've probably seen and not even aware of what it was. But we learned how to work with that, and we've added that um, to part of our harvest celebration and how we work with that. 
And all of that is a culmination for us to create an ensemble. So you might say, well, what is an ensemble? Okay, think of a collage, but on 3D. So you have a surface and you add on different objects to that surface and you build and tell a story. And so for this assemblage, we, we're, we've got uh, corn husk dolls, we've got masks, we've got uh, cowrie shells. All of these little objects are building up on this surface. And so with that, it kind of tells a story. So we've had the intro to ensemblage and then a second ensemblage um, workshop showing you how to build your assemblage. But don't worry, don't say, oh my God, I missed it. I didn't go to the other workshops. They're all on our website. You can find how to follow along and you'll be right up to date with the rest of us. So don't worry about that. So today's workshop is going to be the ensemblage and I'm so happy that we have Camille Hulbert, and she brought an assistant with her today, Abigail Stevens, who she's going to show us how to add one more piece to the ensemble, and then she's going to pull together to show you how a final product would look. But the thing is, you don't have to do it the way we do it. The ensemble is your story. It's how you celebrate. And so we're just giving you options. We're showing you all the different pieces and objects that can be added to the ensemble. Uh, you may want to put the corn husk dolls on there. You might want to put a little affirmation pocket that she included. Last year, as our Kwanzaa um, workshop, we actually made these quilts. We made these um, quilts last year, and these were to celebrate um, Kwanzaa. And what they are is that we have the African fabric here, and then what they are, they're decorated with the, one is decorated with the Kwanzaa principles, and then the other is decorated with the Kwanzaa um, symbols. So we did that, and then we have a little opening here that you can put your affirmations. So affirmations, they could be an affirmation that you might have, but we can also include um, the um, seven principles, because as I said, the seven principles are uh, suggested principles that Dr. Karanga says that we should follow through throughout the year. So you might want to add those in or whatever. So this is the quilt that we did last year. This might be something that you might want to add to your ensemble. It's up to you. So I am going to turn this over to um, Camille Hulbert from M Star Arts, who she has been conducting these Harvest Time workshops. I'm so grateful to have had her here for this period. So she's going to take it away from here. Hello, everyone. Today we are finishing up our Kwanzaa assemblage. As Lisa mentioned in the introduction to the Kwanzaa celebration, um, our Kwanzaa assemblage has been a culmination of all of the harvest activities that we've been doing since September. What we're going to be doing today is finishing up our Kwanzaa assemblage. What we're going to be adding to the assemblage is the seven principles of Kwanzaa. I'm going to walk through some of the steps that we've done previously and I'm going to show you how to apply those principles into the pocket as well as add some of your own affirmation in. So if you started from the beginning with us, we started with mass making and we used plant material. We talked a little bit about using cloth. We talked about the process that we would use to use tacky glue and Mod Podge to put our assemblage together. So I'm going to talk about some of the process we use to put our assemblage together and I'm also going to introduce the applique project that we're doing also so that if you're coming in a little bit late and you're feeling like this is a lot of stuff that I've got to look over and catch up on, actually it's not. You can start with us today and use this process um, for applique as well. So what I'm going to talk about right now is how to finish up your Kwanzaa assemblage. To finish up the Kwanzaa assemblage, we did pockets, okay? So what the use of the pockets are in an assemblage is to keep something. Most assemblage are built out of found objects or found materials. We use some of the exhibits as an 
inspiration to put the to put the Kwanzaa assemblage together. For example, one of the exhibits that we got inspiration from was the Kuba cloth exhibit. And in the Kuba cloth exhibit, which is very exciting as to why we're adding on this applique part, is there's an elephant in the actual mask. So um, what we're gonna be doing is talking about the plant material that represents the mask and the actual mask itself and how it's incorporated into the assemblage. So to finish up this assemblage, what you're going to do is you are going to go to the website and you're going to download the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Now these are, you have two ways to use these. You can use them as an applique, an iron-on applique, or you can use the process that we've been using since we started um, making masks and creating our assemblage, which is with the tacky glue. So for the, the seven principles in order, which are unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith, we are going to start with the first principle. And what you're going to do is you're going to use the tacky glue. And you're going to put a little bit of tacky glue on the back of the paper. Now, you have a choice. In the beginning, we started out with mixed media paper when we made our mask. We're moving on to applique paper. So if you just print this out on regular paper, the Mod Podge is going to work fine. If you decide that you want to iron it on, um, when Abigail talks about the applique process, you'll learn a little bit how to use iron-on appliques. And then you can also assemble this to your um, collage. You can assemble this to your Kwanzaa assemblage um, by ironing as well. So we put Unity. Now again, this is, this is how you want to design it. Um, it's your affirmations. If you didn't have the seven principles um, to put in your affirmation pockets, you could make up your own affirmations if you'd like. Uh, what we are pulling off of is harvest. So things that we're thankful for, um, our family, our friends, all of these are important aspects of how we affirm ourselves as human beings and connect to the earth. And that's what's important about your assemblage. You want it to mean something to you. You just don't want it to be something you're making and you don't know what you're gonna do with it. Um, a lot of Kwanzaa activities include giving gifts and this is going to be a gift to the museum. Um, so you may wanna think about where, who, where or who you'd like to give your assemblage to. Okay, so um, I'm just going to add the rest of the principles. And rather than have them coming out of the pocket, I'm gonna arrange them in different ways so that they stay in order, but they build their way up the side of my assemblage. So I can read them. Okay, so that is the final part to the Kwanzaa assemblage. You've showed all your objects that you've used that you've been working with, from the corn husks to the um, cowrie shells. You have um, accessed some of the knowledge you've gained from the exhibits, such as the Kuba cloth exhibit and the Mukunga mask which is the inspiration for the applique that we're going to be doing next. Um, and you've added in the principles, the seven principles of Kwanzaa, um, to kind of demonstrate the um, necessity to communicate purpose. And this not just be an, a piece of art, but a gift. So you've used your pocket um, to support your affirmations. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to Abigail, who is going to be talking about our applique and the steps that you're going to use with the applique paper to create an applique that you can also assemble to this piece 
or you can make it a standalone piece. Thank you, Camille. My name is Abigail Stevens. I'm glad to be here today at the Savannah African Art Museum talking about Kwanzaa and applique. Um, so we are going to pick up the process with the applique and to talk a little bit about Mod Podge. I'm going to go ahead and take off my mask so maybe you can follow along better that way. Um, so we have some materials here on the table, so I just wanted to introduce what we're working with first. So our key ingredient today is going to be Mod Podge, which you've, if you've not worked with this before, it's kind of like a glue. Um, it comes in different sizes. This is a really big canister of it. Um, and there is also glossy and matte and some different textures. So whichever you would prefer, um, we're going to be using the matte today, which just means when we um, apply it, it won't be shiny and it won't look wet when it dries. It'll be a flat kind of picture appearance to it. Um, and to spread the Mod Podge, I will be using a little spatula, or if you have um, just regular paint brushes around your house, or maybe a sponge even would work, some sort of sponge material. Um, so we have a couple things already pl planned out for you today. You have probably been working with your leaf, your elephant ear leaf, which is also known as an African mask. Oh, sorry, I believe I have it upside down, actually, um, from the way we have been um, exhibiting that. And so we're going to be continuing to talk about plant-based materials and fibers. So I'll go ahead and lay that down. And then we also are going to be using the image of the elephant, which Camille mentioned um, the significance here at the African Art Museum in the exhibit that we were all inspired by. So we have this elephant that we've cut out from a fabric swatch or a quilting square. So this is what it looked like initially. We cut this out from a larger piece of fabric. And we can talk a little bit more about that and how you can make your own if you don't have this type of material. It doesn't have to look just like this. So this is what my elephant is going to look like, but your elephant might be very different. Okay, so we've already cut ours out. So I'll go back to our cutout elephant here. So I just cut it out like a coloring book and traced it. And then we're going to carefully open our Mod Podge. And we just need a little bit today. You can use your fingers, it might be a little messy. This is a really fun process, great for kids to get involved. Um, so I'm gonna take just a little bit on the spatula and you can coat right on the leaf, just gently. So you just wanna smooth it out so it's not all lumpy. And then you're going to take your piece of fabric and on the back you wanna adhere the fabric to the elephant ear. This is where I'm going to get messy and use my finger a little bit and just spread it out. So we don't have to pour it. We can just kind of lightly, you can always add more. Um, but again, it's just going to be spread out and you want to coat the entire elephant. So this might take a few minutes. You just want to give it a nice smooth finish and you're just going to press down. If you dump too much, you might need to wipe off some of the excess. So it would kind of squeeze out the sides a little bit. Um, so we're going to just apply that so we'd have a nice flat surface with the elephant ear leaf. The next thing we could do is you could use the elephant cutout and you can apply it in a different way using a transfer paper. Um, which I have a pre-made cutout square of here. It doesn't need to be very big, just about as big as your elephant. I'll borrow the one I already cut out. The elephant that we had cut out and traced. So I'm going to move him here. I'm going to hold that up so you can see he would be just fitting into that square perfectly. So we would lay him flat. And then there would be instructions for you to follow on our website that more explain the process of using the iron. So basically, you're making a transfer print using the special paper. Well, and we're back. Thank you so much, Camille and Abigail. Um, it's been a wonderful harvest season. Thank you both. Um, we're hoping that you learn something and something that you can do as a family. Um, this ensemblage, we're going to show you a picture of it finished and show you how to display it as well. So that will be on the website so that you will see how it can be displayed. You can either hang it up like we um, hung up the, um, the, the quilts, or it can be framed. It could be a part of your Kwanzaa decoration, or it can be a gift. 
Um, so, um, you know, all the different elements. And again, it's your story. You tell your story. We're just giving you options. So there are various things that you can do to it. You can add on the Cornhusk dolls or not. You can add the, um, um, the, 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 the pocket there, the uh, pockets. You can add cloth to it. You know, you might even want to add a little recipe, grandma's biscuit recipe or something. You might want to do an iron-on of that. That applique people paper is really good that you can iron on different things. So you might want to add something else onto it. We taught you how to do the um, add the elephant mask um, leaf. We taught you how to do that. Well, that you can add different things to it. So you can add other elements to your assemblage. That is up to you. It is your story. We're just here to give you options. So I just want to um, let you know that um, our workshops are here twice a month. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we have not been able to do our on-site workshops, which we so miss. We miss having you here. But we'll get back. We'll get back to them. But in the meantime, we will show you our workshops on our website. As I said, um, Camille Hulbert is from M Star Arts Creative. We invite you to go to the M Star Arts Creative website where you will be able to make purchases of um, little seed pockets that, um, that um, Camille has created, quite lovely. And so there are little pockets and you can put your little seeds in there for your plants so you can start your little harvest, your little garden. Uh, and also Kwanzaa cards, handmade Kwanzaa cards. And she has also made masks not the decorative mask, although these are decorative, but these are decorative and safe masks, like what we've been wearing. So, so she'll have different masks that she has there uh, on the website. So do go to our website and you will be linked to M Star Arts Creative website for that and other information about other things that they're doing. So we thank you so much. We wish you a happy holiday. So be safe, be well, and be happy. Thank you.